question I get on this channel a lot is, hey, Walt, how do I figure uh, feed point impedance? And um, when should I use a four to one versus a nine to one? Well, I'm gonna answer that question right now. Stick around. You know, a question I get on this channel a lot is, um, hey, Walt, you use these uh, four to one and nine to one unons, and these are my go-tos, my LDGs. You use these all the time uh, in making antennas. Um, how do we, uh, what do we know which one to use? And uh, how do you calculate feed point impedance? Well, let's start right off the bat by saying that we're kind of overthinking things if we think we have to calculate feed point impedance. It's something, the, the lengths of the wires are kind of a known value. A lot of research has been done over the years and they're just there. Yes, you can calculate feed point impedance. There are formulas to do that. You could use a, uh, an, an antenna analyzer and, and analyze the antenna if you wanted to, or a VNA if you wanted to. The thing with this is, is you gotta remember for feed point impedance, you turn that VFO dial and change the frequency, you're changing the value of the feed point impedance. So I don't wanna overthink it. Let's just go with some values that I know that simplify this thing and get out and start making some antennas because this is years and years of people making antenna, what we'll call random wire antenna, which aren't random, um, the lengths that have been used. I'll put a link below to a great article. I've done that in a lot of other videos too on determining random wire lengths. But um, let's start off with, here's a little quick sketch I put together. Um, let's start off with a driven element. If you look at a driven element of some of the popular antennas, the ones I've made recently, I made the uh, 17.5, the 20.5, and the 25 foot antenna, which is the Ribicoff antenna. The approximate, not the exact, but the approximate uh, feed point impedance value, you know, at the at the counterpoise, at the, at the feed point, is 200 ohms, just somewhere in that neighborhood, maybe 180 to 300, but that approximate neighborhood. Then for longer lengths, which I've, I've built a lot too, is like for mostly in vertical is 29 foot, 35 and a half foot, 41 foot. And then, you know, I've built some 58 and 71 footers, but those are horizontal type antennas. But feed point impedance in those are around 450. Yeah, maybe 375 to 550, but approximately 450 ohms. So if we look at this and we look over at the counterpoise, a little quick little hint there too, another quick question I've asked, what, what, side of the uh, counterpoise do you attach to driven element? And um, hey, there are no bad answers, or uh, no dumb answer questions, I should say. Um, that goes to the feed point is uh, the driven element uh, goes to the positive and the counterpoise, I'm just showing a quick little wire here, but ground system, counterpoise, whatever, you're on the negative side. Anyway, if you look at this, coax is 50 ohms. If we take the approximate values above, let's just say 200, 200, divided by 50 is four, or a four to one ratio. So in those antenna lengths, we'd use a four to one and get a pretty darn close match at the feed point. One that if wasn't perfect and resonant, it would really reduce the stress on our, uh, on our ATU, our antenna tuner, to bring that thing in and use. Same said with, uh, take 450 ohms, and then you have the five, the 50 ohm coax at that unions doing the work, It's 450 divided by 50 is nine, which is nine to one. So basically what we're doing here, we'll, do, we'll show it with the nine to one. Here, it even says here, in fed long wire antenna, okay? So the antenna's here, and this, my arm's the antenna, the, this is the wire coming in right here, 450 ohms here. The coax coming in is 50 ohms. Nine to one ratio, this is stepping either stepping down or stepping up, if you want to say it that way, is this, this internal transformer here is making these two match and basically a nice flow of impedance at the feed point. So that's kind of why what's going on with them. And those values I just showed you, you, you know, those are the ones that are the most common. And I've found that um, the shorter wires, like, you know, the 17 and a half, the 20 and a half, and the, for that matter, the Ribicoff at 25, the shorter wires seem to have a lower feed point impedance, you know, the lower value per se. And the longer the wire is, kind of the higher it gets out. If you think about it, like a, you know, a half wave antenna, we're up to around 2,500 ohms. And if you, that's why we use a 49 to one to bring it back down to match the 50 ohm coax. So that's kind of a quick 
how how to determine one from the other is it's all about the feed point impedance and that ratio. You know, I love building antennas and you, for, for these types of things, get out there and play. Like I said, you're going to get a these guys out there that are going to beat you up and say you need to you're you got so much loss or whatever. Let me tell you something. When you're operating with let's say QRP or 20 up to 100 watts, yeah, there's some loss, but that loss is not going to change the fate of the free world. I mean, it's it's all about with me with a multi-band random wire antenna is you know i can get out there and operate on any band i mean i've got the impedance down yes it's it's a compromise yes i've got losses going on but i could switch i could be talking on 40 meters and just like that go to the 12 meter band if i hear it's open and operate and that's pretty cool and why i like random wire antennas especially verticals and you know i operate by the by the sea so i kind of compensate with the loss with the amazing ground plane that I have with the salt water below me. So, um, yeah, so there you go. That's just kind of quick down and dirty. One of the, I, I've been promising I'd kind of tell, you know, the, when to use a four to one, when to use a nine to one. Don't overthink it. Don't worry about calculating it. Just research antennas and you'll see, hey, this antenna either will tell has a feed point impedance of, you know, two to 300 or, you know, you can see where other people have experimented with these antennas and what they've used and do it that way. I mean, if you want to get deep into the theory, go for it. I mean, model, get a modeling software and do that. But um, I like to just get out there and build antennas. And I kind of encourage you to do the same thing as well. Hope that helps. Um, if you're into building antennas and operating portable, please like and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Walt K4OGO73, my friends.